they will immediately feel supported. Right. And not only acknowledges it, but build it in the plan so that you say to the team, I'm going to be checking with you periodically. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I want to know, are, are, are things piling up? Are you getting behind? When is your busiest time? Are you getting a lot of calls with customers that are asking a lot of questions? I'm going to see if maybe we can get an intern to come in. Maybe we can have another department that they can let us know when, when they have a light moment and they can sign up for a time that they can be assistants. So as soon as they see the leader is aware that they may be stressed mm. and willing to take some of that stress off of them, very often they totally calm down and things run so much smoother. Oh, it's just amazing. And yeah, because they felt yes. the support. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So, so the nature of change is that it is disorienting, right? Where is my toothbrush? Mm-hmm. And that people have to move from a kind of a sense of competency and seamlessness right. into being an apprentice all over again and feeling awkward. They have to learn new things, a new environment, you know, where is everything now? And that's why we have orientations, because change is disorienting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, the, you also can, can start looking for some of the humor in it, uh, you know, um, because, like, for instance, today our power went out for about 45 minutes. Hmm. And um, I couldn't get on, you know, we had no Wi-Fi, couldn't get on my computer. Um, you know, they, everything I wanted to do, I couldn't do. Hmm. So I thought, Carol, just calm down, you know, go in the guest room and just sit down. And I picked up the remote control to turn on the television. <laughs> hmm. You see, I mean, I know it just didn't make the connection. I, right. I, I couldn't get anything done because we had no power, but I was going to go sit and watch TV. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, and, and so and it, you can almost laugh at yourself when those things happen. Well, and, that, yes. You know, that's what you want to share with your team member, with your spouse, you know. Right. Something that, that, that just showed, you know, we are creatures of habit. Right. You know, and we do get in a routine in order to be more efficient, in order to do things well. And, you know, change does disrupt that. So let's see some humor in it. Let's see that. Yes, there's going to be some stress, and let's take a look at our communications, because during times of change, you've got to gear up on the communications. Mm. And I always tell people, you know, American, when Americans think about um, communicating, very often we think about debate. Mm-hmm. Let's debate this, so we're going to have a debate. Mm-hmm. Well, debate is actually polarizing. It's kind of, you know, if you and I are going to debate something, my I'm going to try to win a point over you. And then you're going to try to possibly exaggerate, maybe even stretch the truth, because you're going to get a point over me. Where are we getting with this? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I'm going to get people defending my end of the poll. You're going to get people defending your You don't want this on your team. This is all loss of energy. Mm-hmm. So instead of debate, let's take a look at dialogue. Mm-hmm. And dialogue is respectful. Dialogue is listening. Dialogue is accepting what the person has to say. Even if you don't agree, you could still say, you know, I hear some points there that we probably can use down the road if we can't use them right now. Thanks for sharing that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I always I always suggest to, to managers, when they're putting together an agenda for a team meeting, put at the top of the page, dialogue. Mm. and then put your five bullet points. Oh, I so like that, that. People know that the reason of our meeting is so that we have a dialogue, that it's a give and take, that it's respectful, that there's truth, that there's, you know, there's fairness, and that we're going to walk away from here having benefited, and now we're going to be able to take action instead of wasting energy on debating. Hmm. So even introducing the word, writing it, having it written, um, Mm -hmm. introduces it as a value. People know that they're not going to be lectured to. It's not going to be uh, just a one-way communication where they're dictated to. I like that very much. And I, I think that that does drive change, just to introduce 
uh, new words, new concepts, new ways of being. Well, it's it's taking communication from from um, comp- competition to cooperation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I'm going to cooperate if if we're going to listen to each other's ideas. But if you're trying to win points over me, which is in a sense going to belittle me. Right. You know, now some people will get strong and bully you right back and others will just back off and say, I don't want to be a part of it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Where where a leader, a leader wants everyone's view to be respected. Right. That way you get more ideas. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And also to recognize that everyone is a a leader. If they're not an official leader, everyone is a leader with a, a small L. And Mm -hmm. that we're leaders of our own lives and that we all have a sense of responsibility for how the meeting goes. And Mm -hmm. we participate um, in our own way from from what we can give. So that's really good. And I wanted to just circle back to what you said just a little earlier about acknowledging that change is frustrating and stressful and that... um, it's a way of normalizing people's emotions so they don't feel like they're the only ones. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm weird. I'm the only one. Everybody is, is doing great with this change, but not me. And I may be smiling, but inside I'm in turmoil. And mm-hmm. the, the reason for that is that people hide behind masks. So how are you doing? Fine. How are you doing? Fine. Everybody is fine, mm-hmm. and nobody wants to tell the truth. So now people wind up comparing their outsides, their insides rather, to other people's outsides. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy, and it's apples and oranges. You you cannot compute the two. Well, the fear that if, if I tell you the truth, that, that I'm, I'm really confused with the with the way things are going, you know, with this change, you know, I might, somebody might think I'm not up to the job. Right. They may start letting people go. Right, right. I mean, I, I, I'm better off to, I'm better off to just fudge right. for a while. Right. You know? Yes. Um, so there are a lot of fears. So right. There's a lot of fears there. And you know, Carol, when I lead retreats or seminars or, or classes, I always start with self-disclosure. Because mm-hmm. this this opens people up to be willing to disclose themselves. And then when you have open communication, then then anything can happen. You have a whole world of responsibilities uh, and possibilities. Mm-hmm. So for, for someone to be able to say, I'm confused, that can be very frightening unless the leader has somehow demonstrated you know, this is confusing, and, and I remember when, or this is mm-hmm. hard for me to, or whatever it is. You know, it kind of reminds me that um, uh, one time I was doing a seminar, and I had a whole list of qualities. I can't even remember what all of them were, and asking employees, um, what do you value in a leader? And they're, you know, pick the top, you know, top two. Mm-hmm. Well, the same Sometimes the same top two, or at least one of those two, came up every single time. One thing that they wanted in a leader, they wanted them to set high expectations. Mm. They wanted to be associated with first class. Nobody wow. wanted a job where, hey, I work there, I'm sorry, jobs are hard to find. Everybody wanted to work with, hey, we're doing great things, I'm a part of this. I so see. So the mm. first thing they wanted was high expectations. But the second thing they wanted was praise. Mm-hmm. So high mm-hmm. expectations without praise, you're going to wear your people down, and mm-hmm. they're going to eventually stop trying to hit the target. Mm-hmm. If you give them praise only, but no high expectations, you're going to lose some of your best people because they're going to say, "Hey, I'm getting a lot of compliments here, but I want more of a challenge than this." Right. I don't want to be. I don't want to be work with a company that's getting so many complaints because we're slipping up so often. Wow. So keeping that in mind, that people want to be, they want a job that they can brag about. They want to be, they want to be associated with something that they're doing things new and we're learning and we're growing. And at the same time, they're getting so many, you know, so much encouragement and, and, and they're getting kudos and so that they, they want to, you know, it keeps up their energy. So I always try to keep those two things in mind, even when you're dealing with children, high expectations, a lot of praise. 
Beautiful. I think that is a a fabulous combination and to keep that in mind. And as you say, if you have one and not the other, in either case, it's not, it's not good. Mm-hmm. Just Got only praise, right, and and with no challenge, it's like country club management. And oh, I can just uh, I can just shirk off. I mean, I don't have to do anything to be praised. Who mm-hmm. who wants that? That's that doesn't even feel genuine. It 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 cannot even feel genuine. Mm-hmm. So the high yeah. expectations are they're high, but they're not impossible. They're not. Perfect. Right. Well, the, well, the, the team's involved in setting them too. Right. Because they're giving you ideas of, hey, from from my end, we, you know, we've had some comments. You know, we've had some frustrated customers. Yes. Um, you know, we've had some complaints here. Can we take a look at this? Is there something else we can be doing? So they're involved in setting the high expectations, and that right. way they're getting praise from the outside as well as from their team. And that goes back to what you said earlier about co ownership. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. You're right. And when um, when I I often lead three day seminars in the corporate world, and I start out with rules we want to live by. What ground rules do we want to set? Mm-hmm. And here's the deal: people will go ahead and they'll name all the rules. I don't have to to say or do a thing. I you, you know, got pe- it. And yeah, sometimes they're hard on themselves. Right. You're, you're, you're like, hey, wait a minute here. Let's not. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know, and we should listen yeah, to each other. Too. Right, right. We should uh-huh. listen to each other and, and not judge. And, um, you know, everyone uh, should participate. Um, they often leave that punctuality, which, which I add, because, of course, you know, in certain settings, you have to you have to uh, follow a certain agenda, and and time is of the essence. Right. But it but it really is uh, so much easier and better. Absolutely, and, setting yeah. the ground rules. You're right. right. And as you and everybody yeah. follows them. Yeah. The leader follows them too. Right. And uh-huh. looking at the amount of input into the decision. And, and the difference between empowering versus overpowering people and how different it is for me to tell you at one adult to other adults, this is, this, these are the rules and this is what you need to do versus what, what rules do you, you think we should uh, work together by in these three days? Well, you're delegating right from the start. Right. And that, that's the whole thing. Once again, even if you're dealing with children, don't take the job back. If mm-hmm. you're saying to them, you know, like you just said, what ground rules do we want to follow? And they give uh, ground rules. Don't give them your sheet of, hey, this is what we're going to do. You know, um, in other words, once once you turn some power over to them, don't take their power back. Never. Never, it, it belongs never. To them. It belongs to them now. It belongs to them. And Carol Ritz, this show belongs to the public now. And <laughs> would you believe <laughs> we... We have finished. It's it's gone by so fast. And could I could I offer could yes. I offer your listeners that um, I have over three hundred original quotes on change. If they mm. want to go to my Twitter to the Ritz, um, it's called to the Ritz, and they're welcome to use any of those quotes um, in any way that they want to on on an agenda if they're planning a meeting. Um, if they're promoting something and they want to use one of those quotes, wow, how lovely. Um, they're open to the public on on my uh, Twitter account. It's to the Ritz. To the Ritz. R I T Z. R I T Z. After, after Carol original Ritz, quotes. right? Professional speaker. Thank you so much, Carol. This has been Thank lovely. You. Expert been on pleasure. leadership and change. Thank you, and we look forward to you coming back on Just Relationships. Looking forward to it, Duffy. Thank, Thank you. you. And this is Dr. Duffy Spencer saying goodbye for now and wishing you great relationships. Relationships.